Testing one, two, testing one. All right, and welcome to the hour of power. Like I said, hour, hour, uh, hour of 50 minute power, power. And then we're teaching on prayer. Let's get right in here. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Watch with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Uh, that phrase, praying always with all prayer, can be also translated all, all kinds or all manner of prayer. And we talked about in our first couple of weeks how that there are, we're going to talk about seven different types of prayer. And we've been talking about the prayer of, and I'm not going to write everything out, believing and receiving. We also refer to that as the prayer of faith. Okay. And then we talk about the prayer of binding and loosing. That's also, we can refer to that as authority prayer. Talk about the prayer of supplication, that's making petition, and then prayer of intercession, praying for the lost, praying for others. Okay, uh, number five, talk about the prayer of thanksgiving. Number six, prayer of worship or adoration. And number seven, prayer of consecration, dedication. Okay, and um, we kind of we kind of talked about that these were heart prayers. You know, please don't write me and say every kind of just just these deal with your, our heart toward God, heart our, our our submission, our heart towards God, heart prayers. This is um, you know this is believing for others. And this is uh, life. This is living. This is how we live. Okay? So we started out with the prayer of believing and receiving, the prayer of faith. We talk about that all, a lot. You know, what same things shall you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. And so that, you know, that is what we call, uh, commonly call the prayer of faith. Uh, we kind of like to separate it just a little bit, make it clearer, because all prayer should be prayed in faith. However, um, you know, the prayer of believing and receiving is, is the prayer of faith. Because Jesus tells us in Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24. Um, and then secondly, uh, we, we want to just kind of get into uh, the prayer of believing and, I mean, binding and loosing. You know, Jesus said, what sort of things you bind on earth and shall be mound in heaven, whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And when we look over into uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, I always do this. I get, I get these, um, these, these verse numbers mixed up in my head all the time, and it shouldn't, but I do. Second, First Corinthians chapter, Second Corinthians chapter ten, verse four. I want to say verse chapter four, verse ten. Good scripture, but that's not what I'm talking about. Uh, chapter ten, verse three. For we walk in the flesh; we do not war. After, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal; they're not natural. Um, you know, so we, we get into this, we start talking about, you know, so 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through whatever we stop, all right? Um, so the carnal, natural. They're not natural. We're not fighting a natural battle, okay? It's just spiritual. Weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down strongholds. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in readiness a revenge to revenge all disobedience, while your obedience is fulfilled. Everybody say, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, <clears throat> we're not fighting a natural battle. Our battle cannot be with flesh and blood. If you take the devil on toenail to toenail out in the, in the flesh, he's going to whoop you. Okay, he, he is a supernatural being that has a greater power than you do in the natural. Now, we're not limited to the natural. We're lim we have the supernatural, okay? And so uh, we have Jesus in, in um, for John, 1 John 5, uh, 4. Um, look, let's look over there. Sorry, full four. Ye are of God, little children. Okay. 
I got, I got initials down here, like consecration, dedication, worship, adoration, thanksgiving, intercession, supplication, binding, loosing, believing, and receiving. Um, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he than he that is in the world. Okay, so second, I mean, um, kid breaks First John 4.4 4 tells us what? The greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. The greater one's in us. So Satan is not greater than the church. Amen. Satan's power is not greater than the church. Okay? And so we were over here in 2 Corinthians 10. Let's kind of, we'll just run back there, and then we're going to run over to Luke. Weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down strongholds, casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringeth into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So we go through verse 5 here. Our weapons are not carnal. They're not natural. But they are mighty. Through God. They're mighty through God. Okay? Second, first John 4, 4. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. The greater one is in us. Okay? The greater one is in us. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So, according, you know, we, we come to 2 Corinthians and we find, remember Jesus says, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound, whatever you loose on earth shall be loose. We're talking about authority prayer. Let's go to Luke chapter uh, 10 at this point. Luke 10. And we'll look down here around um, verse 18. So we'll go, let's go to Luke 10. And we'll go 18 and 19. Okay. That is a terrible, that is a terrible eight. Of course, we make a nine first at And I, he said, I beheld um, Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. <coughs> now this is, of course, in the King Jimmy. King Jimmy. Obviously, not the 1611 King Jimmy. You would, we wouldn't even be able to hardly say it. Okay? But the King Jimmy here, and um, King Jimmy says, you know, Behold, I give you power over all the power, over the power of the enemy. Does anybody know who the enemy is? Satan. Satan, all right, Satan, all right, he is the enemy in his kingdom. Um, my margin even has this here, but, you know, when you study this, <coughs> in the Greek, we have, two different, uh, we have two different words for power here in Luke 19, 18, uh, 10, 8, 19. We have two different words for power in the Greek, okay? In the Greek, the first word, behold, I give you power. That which Jesus gives us, okay? is ex o -sia. This word does not mean might or strength or ability. It means authority. This word, and over all the power of the enemy, is dunamis. Now this word means miraculous power, might, you know, you know, and it's supernatural. So God says in his word, Jesus, the head of the church, comes and says, Behold, I give you not dunamis. I give you exosia. Over the dunamis of the enemy. Now here's one beautiful thing is, um, there is no, there is no um, authority left for Satan. Jesus stripped him of his authority. Remember, Jesus made a show of them openly, triumphing them over in it, okay? 
uh, made, made a show of them openly, uh, made a spectacle of Satan. He took back Satan's authority, and then he, he told the church, go in my name. We'll get to there in, in Matthew 28. But so here Jesus says in Luke 10, 18 and 19, Behold, I give you exousia, I give you power, I give you exousia, I give you authority over all the dunamis of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt thee. So Satan does have an element of power. He does. You're a fool if you, think, if you don't think he does. If you stick your head in the sand and go, drop kick me Satan through the goalpost of life uh, while you're sitting there going, he ain't got no power, he ain't got no power. He, he going to put your head where your feet was two seconds before. Okay? Hi, Dom. And so um, we have here Jesus saying, I give you exosia, uh, which is authority. Now, what good is authority? Well, you know, a police officer can walk out in the street with his badge on, his uniform. He can, cars can come down the road. He can stand up and say, stop in the name of the law, and you'd better stop. Now, he doesn't have the actual might to stop that vehicle, unless he's wearing a cape with a big S on his chest. Otherwise, he can't stop the vehicle. Okay? Now, he has what? He has exosia. He has authority to tell you to stop. He doesn't have the might. He doesn't have the miraculous power. He doesn't have the strength or the ability to stop that vehicle. He simply has the authority to tell it to stop. So what, what good is exosia against dunamis? And Dad Hagen used to say this, it's what stands behind the exosia, what stands behind the authority. Now, if you run over that police officer, you will find out real quick that the entire police force stands behind that authority. And whatever dunamis the person had when they ran over him, they will encounter all the dunamis of every police officer and every law enforcement agency in in 30 in, in 300 mile radius when they find him. Okay, and all that will come to bear on them. What stands behind the authority? The exosia that's been given to the church by Jesus, the head of the church, is the dunamis of God. All of God's might, all of God's power, all of God's ability, all of God's strength, all of God's supernatural uh, power stands behind the authority he gives to the church. Meaning that if Satan were to transgress against the authority, he's going to encounter the dunamis of God. He's already done that once. This is where Jesus is talking about this here in Luke, 19, in Luke 10, back up in verse um, 17, where he says, um, And the seventy return again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject to us through thy name. And Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Now, when did he see that? Well, remember in the, in the book of Ezekiel, Satan, or the morning star Lucifer, says, I will ascend my throne into the heavens. I will be as the most high. God's response to that is, is pretty clear. I will cast thee as profane out of my mouth, out of my presence. And this is what Jesus is referring to here. In that moment where Satan tried to overthrow heaven and said, I will ascend into the stars. I will ascend into the heavens. I will exalt my throne above the throne of God. What's he trying to do? He's trying to overtake heaven. He's trying to overthrow heaven with his dunamis. But in that moment, he encountered the dunamis of God. Where God said, I will cast thee as profane from my presence. And Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall out of heaven. What's he give us? He's given us a visual that Satan left at the speed of light. 186,000 miles per second, he left heaven. Okay? I mean, he goes in there all cocky. He's all puffed. He thinks he's bad to the bone. He's going to puff up on God. He's going to tell God what he, how bad the boat he is. <coughs> I'm taking over. I'm running this place. i got 30 angels all come with me. And says, I'm taking over. And God says, out of here. Boom, he's gone. Because his authority is greater than Satan's dunamis. Because his dunamis stands behind his authority. So, Matthew 28. <coughs> Matthew 28. Verse 18. Or get down here at the end of the chapter anyway. Matthew 28. And Jesus spake and said unto them, All power, again, the word is, is exosia, all authority, is given unto me in heaven and earth. Therefore, 
You go. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them all to reserve all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So, you know, um, it's interesting when um, <clears throat> Brother Kenyon was writing his book on the wonderful name of Jesus. Uh, and if you don't have that book, you need, it's an old book. You can find it from uh, Kenyon Gospel Publishing. Um, there's not a book he write, he's written I wouldn't recommend. Okay? <clears throat> that Brother Hagen wrote the book, The, the Name of Jesus, <clears throat> which was used, he, he used heavily uh, with permission and credits the Kenyans with the use of the wonderful name of Jesus. In that seminar, he taught at Ramah. Uh, back in the 70s, late 70s, okay? And the book, The Name of Jesus, came out of that. But the wonderful name of Jesus, what Kenyon wrote, in that book he talks how he was teaching on the name of Jesus one day. And he was reading along this line, and there, there was, a, um, there was a, 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 a lawyer in there. And he's reading along, and he came up to me after the service and said, Brother Kenyon, um, does, um, did Jesus give the church the power of attorney to use his name? Well, he said, well, well, sir, you're a lawyer. I'm, I'm just a layman. I'm a preacher. He said, you tell me, did he? He said, well, if language means anything, he did. He said, Jesus declared that he had all authority and then turned around and said to the church, you go in my name. Jesus delegated through his name. So our exousia, our authority is vested I'm trying to talk German this night. Vested. Vested. Okay. Vested. Vested. I'm just being funny, guys. Don't get uptight. In the name of Jesus. Now, when we get talking about power of attorney, we can get into some really pretty, beautiful, glorious um, revelation here. Okay? So, the authority of Jesus said in Matthew 28, 18. Uh, let me put that up here. Matthew 28, 18. And if we go over to Mark 16. 18 through 20. Okay. Power of attorney. So we get, I'm just going to P-O, put P-O-A, okay? Power of attorney. Jesus gave the church power of attorney what? To use his in my name. In my name. In my name. I've got all the authority. i got, heaven stands behind it. And in my name, you go. If, um, say, um, and, and this happened, you know, I was, I was on a missions trip one time, and Janie was having to do some, we had to do power of attorney for us. She was helping her sister buy a house while I was out of the country. I mean, there were several mission trips there in the back of the 90s I went on. She was always doing something while I was gone. Buying something, I mean, you know, all kinds of stuff was going on. I'm out, I'm out somewhere in the, out on the other side of the world doing something, you know, and I'm, I'm calling home, you know, when I can get a line home, and they're telling, well, we did that. What? I leave the country for two weeks. And what? Okay, I come back, and sister's bought a house, you know. <laughs> all right. But say, say I'm leaving, 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 going to Estonia, which is, you know, I'm going to do. Um. And say, so, you know, I'm going to Estonia and going to go preach with uh, Ken Kasich there in Paida and uh, go, go see some of the, the churches I've been in all around the nation and, you know, in Tallinn and out in Narva and all the, in all the different places there in Estonia and minister. And, um, you know, I'm leaving, but right in the middle of leaving, we have, um, we're, we're closing on a house. We're refinancing a house or whatever. And right in the middle of my trip, closing is going to come up. And, I, well, obviously I can't be there to sign the paperwork. But I can go down to the bank. I can sign a, a power. Now, you can sign a limited power of attorney or a power of attorney. Now, Jesus gave his limited power of attorney. What? You can't use his name to overthrow heaven. But you can use his name to do anything his word tells you to do. Okay? Whatever he told you you could do with that name, you can do with that name. That's why we go to Mark 16. You know? And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They'll cast out devils. They'll take up serpents. They'll drink any other thing that will not harm them. Okay? They'll speak with new tongues. They, uh, they'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Okay, what did he do? He told us what we could do with his name. We have power over the enemy. Behold, I give you power. Remember back over here in Luke. I give you power, exosia, over all the dunamis of the enemy. We do it in his name. It's been vested in us. We have the authority to use his name. Can somebody say glory? And we as a church have, been, have received that right to do that. So if I, if I leave the country, I can sign a piece of paper. I can go down to the bank and, and have it notarized and have them watch me do it. And say, my, my, uh, I give Janie Glisson Taylor 
the, the right and the authority to sign in, my, in, in, in the stead of my, in, in my absence and in my stead to sign my name is a legal binding uh, resolution that this, I, I agree to the terms of this, whatever, this contract. And I can come back and come in and go to the bank you know, three weeks later and go, what is this? I didn't sign this. I ain't paying this. And they'll pull out the other piece of paper and say, Mr. Taylor, but you signed this. It's legally binding. This is a legally binding contract. Jesus gave the church a legally binding contract to have exousia, authority over the enemy. Satan has to obey the authority we have because when we say in the name of Jesus, now don't freak out. It's just as if Jesus Christ was himself standing there and he said it. It's the power of attorney. There is no difference between you saying, in the name of Jesus, I bind you, Satan, command you to cease and desist in what your operation is right now, according to the word of God, then Jesus comes and says, Satan, I command you to cease and desist in your operations. Not that I'm Jesus, but he gave me the exosia. He gave me the authority in his name to act in his behalf in the earth. Remember Jesus told the church, the works that I do shall you do and greater than these because I go unto my Father. Amen. Amen. And so we, we have here, we have this power, you know, we have it over Satan, but the church still acts like that Satan is the Wizard of Oz and we're the, we're the cowardly, lion, cowardly lion looking for our heart. No, that's the ten men looking for the heart, right? The lion's looking for courage. Yeah. All right? Okay. And so we have... You know, we have us all running around, oh, Satan's going to do this, oh, he's going to do that, oh, I wonder what am I going to do? You know, like, my Brother Hague was talking one time, he was, he was out there in, in California, and they were um, back in the, in the, when they had an outbreak of Spanish flu back in the 40s or 50s, terrible outbreak of flu. They had high school football games we played one night, and uh, one team, every one of the players were homesick with the flu. The other team, only one player wasn't homesick with the flu. The, the entire, the two, entire foot, two football teams were sick with the Spanish flu. And they were standing around after, after church one night, and Brother Hagin talk, was talking to a group of ministers. He said, well, I'll tell you one thing. I'll never get the Spanish flu. And he said one of the ministers stood there and got all reverent and said, Brother Hagin, I wouldn't say that if I were you. And he said, why not? Don't you know the devil might carry you? He said, that's the very dude I want to hear me. <laughs> <laughs> I want him to hear me. Amen? I want him to know that I'm saying I'm not going to get the flu because I have authority over him. Go away. <laughs> Praise God. And I was getting ready to rack it up and wrap, wrap it up and preach. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There we go. All right. That's, he said, God was almost reverent of the devil. Afraid that he might hear you say something. This is where the church has lost sight of our exosia. We sing songs. We got the power in the name of Jesus. We got the power in the name of the Lord. No Satan. We do all that and walk outside and start acting like the devil's going to whoop us before we can get to the car. That brother Laverne's in there singing, and we're all shouting, hallelujah, go on, brother Laverne, hallelujah. Come on, sister, either join in there. Oh, yeah, we're having us a camp meeting here tonight. And before you can get to the car, you're out there going, oh, my God, what are we going to do? The devil done stuck his ugly head up. Cut it off. Put something on him. Because you have exosia. You have the authority. So when we say, let's, you know, um, <coughs> like we said, Mark is the parallel uh, passage here to Matthew 28. Stated a little differently. But it's, it's still the, the same thought of what's going on here. <coughs> Verse 14 of Matthew 16. Afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them that had seen him after he was risen. Now, even after he was raised from the dead, they still get, they get contrary. 
And he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and baptized uh, shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Now, real quick, here in Mark, I don't know if you see this at home. Uh, I'm, let me, although the podium is clear, it may still block your, your view. Mark uh, 16. To the end of the chapter here. Um, 19. Okay. These are companion scriptures. Okay. Um, so he says, uh, but what does he say here? He says, he that believeth. And you know what most people read here? He that believeth is baptized. Um, I mean, I'm sorry. Um, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. What they say is, they, they look in here, and it says, and these signs shall follow them that believe, but here's what they hear. And these signs shall follow the apostles. That's what they hear. That's what their theological filter says to them. That's not what it says. It doesn't say in these signs to follow the apostles. It says, go preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that, not, not the apostles, them that believe. It'll follow them that believe. The delegation of the name of Jesus to the church was given to everybody that believes. Every believer, every believer has the right, the exousia, to use the name of Jesus. Because we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. They are not carnal. They are not natural. They are mighty through God to the pulling down strongholds. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, mights, dominions, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Our battle is spiritual. We've got to stop trying to fight it in the natural. What's our number one means of natural battle? Anybody know what it is? Worry. We think by worrying we're going to fix something. All you're going to do is make yourself sick. Okay? You're going to worry yourself sick. This is, this is the natural means. It doesn't accomplish anything. Now, our weapons are mighty through God to the pulling down of the strongholds. They're not carnal. They're spiritual. And they're found right in here. They're found in the exorcism given to the church and the authority given to the church. The name of Jesus. That he's given us to use to overcome the enemy. Okay? So Mark says, you know, and these times shall follow them that believe. And what's he say? In my name. In my name. Um, they shall cast out devils. Uh, better stated uh, you probably bear out better in the Greek, say more along the lines of they shall exercise authority over demons. Okay? That, that would be, be the, the better gist of what's being said than cast out devils. I mean, if we, you know, being Pentecostal, you know, having a Pentecostal, battle, we like cast it out, devils, come out, devils! I mean, we love that. You know, we wouldn't get shambaki with it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, come out in Jesus' name! And you had to love Brother Shambach. <laughs> you had to love Brother Shambach. I mean, you know. But, you know, uh, we, we, we won't cast out them devils, yeah! And, yeah. and that's true. But really, when we, start, when we get to the right biblical mindset, we understand what we're really saying is we're going to exercise, exercise, we're going to exercise authority over demons. In my name, they shall exercise authority over demons. We're going to stand our ground as the church and use our authority to overcome demons through the name of Jesus. And Satan himself, okay? Um, they shall cast out devils, or exercise authority over demons. They shall speak with new tongues. Now, I don't know what you've been taught, but I'm telling you, this is not talk about you become a linguist, okay? A linguist. You know, you suddenly can speak French, Spanish, Italian, German, you know, Thai, uh, you know, whatever language there is. That's not what that's just talking about, okay? I'm sorry. We can prove it through the Bible. Um, but some people just look, like to come up with that stuff because they think it, it fixes their theological problems. Uh, it doesn't. 
Because you know, one preacher even said one time, that means if you used to cuss, you'll stop cussing. I thought, my God, what if somebody didn't cuss? They're going to get saved start cussing. Okay. Now, this is talking about what we find in, in, in the book, of the, the letter to the church at Corinth. Okay. They shall take up serpents. Again, this is not having snake handling services. You ain't going to come to our church and find a basket up front with rattlesnakes in it. If you do, you won't find me there. I ain't going to be there. I remember that, that winning Bagwell and the Sunlighters, a, a gospel, a southern gospel group, went up to a church. He said, in West Virginia, they, dropped, they had to drop power cords two miles, get enough power up to the church where they were going to sing to run their equipment. <coughs> they got up there and said, stand on the platform and looked up there and saw a couple of baskets. He said, looked at the baskets, what are they for? He said, you'll find out. And he said, the church got to going. They got to, you know, getting on the piano and getting, you know, and people started getting shouting and they ran up there. All of a sudden, some lady ran and threw the top off and pulled out a rattlesnake and started dancing around with it. He looked over at the pastor and said, Where's your back door? He said, we don't have one. He said, where do you want it? <laughs> All right. Now, now he, when he says take up serpents, it's like Paul in the item of Letus. You know, he reached in to get fire with it, and a venomous viper came out and bit him. He shook it off and went on. They just sat around waiting for him to die. They knew anybody got bit by that died. But yet, he just kept living and kept living, and all of a sudden, they all get saved because he didn't kill him. That's what it's talking about. It's not talking about doing snake handling services. That's, that's stupid. It can get you killed. It has nothing to do with faith. All right? Uh, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. That does not mean you have services where you drink uh, you know, strychnine. Uh, we're going to believe God to live. No. If you actually drink something that's poisonous, you'll, you'll live. Okay? God will, God will take you and protect you from something that happens accidentally. Not because you were stupid. God, God doesn't bless stupidity. Okay? And the last thing, thing is, <coughs> they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So Jesus tells him that in my name, so here we go back to this, we go back to the exosia, the authority of God that's vested in the name of Jesus, that Jesus says in Luke 10 that he's given to the church, Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give you power, I give you exosia, I give you authority over all the power, all the dunamis of the enemy. And we talk about God's dunamis is what stands behind God's exosia, the authority given to the church, which is greater than Satan. We know that because, what, 1 John 4, 4 says, Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Isn't that right? Okay. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. God's greater than Satan. Satan, Jesus conquered Satan. Amen. He made a show of him openly. He said that earlier. He made a show of him openly, triumphing over him in it. Okay? He, he defeated the enemy. He's greater. At every turn, no matter what Satan did, throughout the ministry of Jesus, Jesus won the battle. They came out one day, going to throw him off a cliff. He just passed through the midst of him. He's going across the sea one day, going to, he's in the back of the boat asleep. Storm comes up. Disciples get all up tight, run by there. Master, don't you care that we perish? He's asleep. <coughs> Why is he asleep? <clears throat> because he said, let us go to the other side. He's going to the other side. If he has to ride the waves over there asleep, he's going to the other side. And then... Well, that was Jesus. He gets up and stops the storm, you know, and he, he stops after he gets done, looks at him and goes, I am the Son of God. That's why I could do that. No. He looked at him and said, oh, ye of little faith. Wherefore did you doubt, oh, ye of little faith? They could have stopped the storm. He rebuked them for their lack of faith in that moment. Because he had said, let us go to the other side. Okay. So when we're encountering the enemy, and so we have, you know, Mark 16, these, all these signs are supernatural signs, folks. Okay? I remember a number of years ago, John Houston was talking about, he, he got up one time, he was going to preach on the gifts of the Spirit. Not Joel, but John, his dad. And one of my favorite preachers was John Osteen. Just, I mean, he a little, little spitfire evangelist, became a pastor. I mean, he was, he had the greatest stories. I love his canary stories. I love his ball game. They're just, they were great. But he said, he got up one time, he's going to teach on the gifts of the Spirit. And he said, wisdom was our philosophers. Your knowledge was our universities. And, um, you know, faith was, you know, the ability to believe God, you know. And uh, healing was our doctors. And uh, tongues was linguistics. And, and, you know, he said he got down there and, and got down in the middle of this thing. He stopped. He just stopped his sermon, 
looked at the church and said, forget about it, people. I don't know a thing I'm talking about. Forget everything I said. Go home and come back next week and walked off the platform. Okay? But at least he had enough sense when he got in the middle of that, he didn't know what he was talking about. Yeah. He said, man, I just didn't even didn't know what I was talking about. Yeah, that's pretty funny. It's pretty funny to hear, hear, hear the story here and tell it. Okay? Um, so we said, Mark says, that these signs shall follow them that believe. And that say it will follow the apostles. We're always wanting to make it the apostles. All oh, the apostles could do this and the apostles could do that. But Jesus said these signs will follow them that believe. If you're born again, you believe. You're a believer. You believe the word of the Lord. So therefore, you qualify for the signs to follow you. But how? Back to this exosia, this delegation of, the, of power to the church through the name of Jesus. That's where it came from. Okay? And so we have, to, we have to begin to understand that because we're not fighting a carnal battle, we're not fighting a natural battle, that our, our weapons of our, of our warfare are mighty through God to the pulling down strongholds. If they're mighty through God to the pulling down strongholds and we're not fighting a carnal battle, then where do we go? We go and we begin to do our battle in prayer. We begin to do our battle by speaking the name of Jesus. We begin to find scripture that supports what we need from God in situations of life. And we begin to speak what the word of God says and use our, the authority in the name of Jesus to thwart Satan's advance and Satan's ability to operate and to function in our life, in the life of our loved ones, those around us. We take our position as sons and daughters of God. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. See, the, the beautiful thing. Can, can you imagine the hissy fit that Satan had on the day of Pentecost when the church was born? And they're in that upper room. They've all been cowered down for, you know, a number of days or 10 days or so. And um, they're all in there, all cowered down. And then suddenly the sound came from heaven as a mighty rushing wind. And filled all the room where they were sitting. They appeared and then cloven tongues like as a fire. And they were all filled with the Spirit. Began speaking in other tongues. The Spirit gave them utterance. And then they stumbled out of that upper room. And Peter walks out there. And all of a sudden this great crowd shows up. And he preaches his 15-minute sermon. And gets 3,000 people saved. Now here's what happens. G Satan had just got Jesus out of here. For three and a half years, every time he tried to do something with Jesus, Jesus just overcame him. He even, even got him in the grave and had control, and, and Satan, thought, and the Bible says he, he spoiled, he hurled back, the Greek says. He hurled back principalities and powers. If you go back to the 22nd Psalm, it says they gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and roaring lion. They're attacking Jesus in death, thinking they've got him, and then he stands up and he hurls back the principalities and powers. As the King of kings and Lord of lords. Glory to God. And Satan's got his knees a shaking. <laughs> thinking, I'm in a trouble now. But then he sees Jesus leave and go back to heaven. Well, all right, I got, he's gone, but I got the earth. And then just a few days later, there's 3,120 that look just like him. And they got the name. And Peter, show, Peter and John show up at the temple one day. There's a man been there for his whole life and says, Silver, and they go, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. And the forces of darkness must abate and relinquish their hold on this man because they've got the name of Jesus. And he stands up and begins to walk in the leap and runs into the temple praising God. Hallelujah. And the Pharisees get upset. Why? Because they got devils. Religious folks always have devils. They got religious devils. You know, there's a lot of devils in the choir. I'm going to tell you, like one, one person said, Satan fell out of heaven and fell straight into the choir loft. <laughs> you go to a lot of church, that's where a lot of your problems are, right up there in that choir. You know? So, I want to sing. Like that old, that old Southern gospel song, Please Let Me Sing in the Choir. Please let me sing in the choir, in the choir. You know, and it was Uncle Charlie. Uncle Charlie could not sing. He could not carry a tune in the bucket. They would never let him sing in the choir. And then one day he died, went to heaven, and then when they got there on Sunday morning, began to sing, and the choir began to sing, this voice came from heaven. It was Uncle Charlie. And he, he you know, it was a, a get-back song. Well, he's in the heavenly choir now. Take that, pal. Well, good. Maybe he got some singing lessons while he was up there. He couldn't sing down here. <clears throat> I mean, 
mean, if you want to make a glad racket, do it on your own time. Amen. Nobody wants to listen to something that's, you know, hard. Well, as long as your heart's right. Well, let's try that when they start building your house. Well, they're a Christian and their heart was right. Yeah, but the, but the, um, the rafters are at 36 inches instead of, tw- you know, at most two foot on center. Usually 18. But, you know, maybe in some structural engineer, they might be <coughs> 24. <coughs> okay? Or your floor joists, 18 on center. Or six, I'm sorry, 16 on center. 16. Okay, 16, 32, 48. Okay. So 16. But you go there, there are thirty. My father-in-law built the cabin, and when we got ready to put the insulation in the roof, those guys had been were at 19 on one, 14 on the other. They were all back and forth all over. The only time they hit it was every four feet. They hit, they hit the four-foot mark right. They guessed the other two in between. <laughs> Guess what we had a hard time doing? Insulating. Because the insulation wouldn't fit because it was 16-inch insulation for 16-inch studs or 16-inch you know, openings. And you get up there, and you got, it's, it's four inches too big. Well, you can't bunch it up, and it won't work right. You bunch it up, you lose your insulation value. So you're having to cut that off. Then we have to take and tape it. And we were, he, he wouldn't go by news, so I had to take and tape it to the other one on the other side to fill in the 19. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, why don't you go buy some 24? And we'll just cut everything to fit, you know. No, nah, I ain't doing that. Oh, God. All right, boss man, you're the boss of your house. So I sent my I sent my sister in law out to the truck to get the insulation stretcher. I said, she said, what does it look like? I said, well, it's got it's got hooks on it like this and, and, and handles, and you so you can stick it in the insulation and put it like this in and stretch the insulation. <laughs> About thirty minutes later, she comes back. I'm up there working. She goes, I couldn't find it. Oh, I know that was mean. <laughs> I'm batting the floor, cracking up. Yeah, it doesn't exist. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, how'd I get off on that? It was funny anyway. All right. No, it was it's because, you know, um, why did I get on that? Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, he's a, he's a Christian. He can sing. You know, you don't. I don't want Christian. I don't want Christian heart surgeons because their, their heart is right. <laughs> Cutting me open and doing stuff in there if they don't know what they're doing, yeah. or if they're not good at what they do. Right. Don't want a Christian brain surgeon because he's a believer operating on my head if he's not good at what he does. Right. But his heart's right. Why? Why does it come to the things of God? We can we'll accept less. Because their heart's right. Then let your heart be right in the things you can do. And be a blessing where you can be a blessing. And let those who have, the, have those gifts or talents use those for the Lord. And, and, and you appreciate what they do. And then you let God use you where you are. You could be one of the best organizers on the planet. And they are there. And you, you go look at their stuff. And you know, they, you don't want them organizing um, a junk drawer. All right? Okay. All righty. So, did y'all get anything out of this? Prayer of binding and loosening. We bind the enemy. We, lo- we, we, loose- we didn't really get into God's part. We loose God. We bind the enemy and we loose God. Okay? All right. Praise the Lord. Thank you all for joining us this week here at Faith and Victory Church. I uh, saw a couple of uh, high school friends, and we're uh, just really glad that y'all guys joined in. And um, bless you for joining us and seeing, with, being with us tonight. And I uh, trust you have a good week. Trust this minister to you. And uh, join us again next week as we uh, dive back into here. We will be taking Thanksgiving Wednesday off. So in two weeks we won't have service uh, because the community center won't be open. So we won't be able to use this room uh, for our midweek service. Okay? So until we meet again, uh, don't forget also Sunday mornings we're here at 11 o'clock. Until we meet again, God bless you. Remember that this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Until next time, bless you.